traveling, being in France or Europe for six months, we are trying new things as we're like trying to live our daily life here. Yeah. Which is different than just like, well, let's go try a new food at this authentic Mexican restaurant. It's just totally, it's a, it's a different kind of new experience. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Thanks. Appreciate that. So. We are the Stills family. After 15 years of marriage, three kids, and successful careers, we decided to take a left turn and change our lives completely. We quit jobs, we quit the never-ending pursuit of chasing more, and we packed up for a grand adventure through Europe. Along the way, we are rediscovering ourselves and each other, learning what it means to slow down and rest, and finding adventure in the simple and extraordinary. We are stills in halftime. I think one of the most obvious things that is new about traveling to any new country is food. You know, you have the experience of eating new foods, period. I still have a goal to eat sardines. I'm the only person with that goal. They actually have here sardine aisles. Oh, like the whole, the whole aisle. aisle is but sardine. One of the things I hadn't really thought through too much is new food experience in trying to make the foods that we love and eat. Yeah. And as I've been looking at recipes and trying to plan meals for weeks, one of the things that I consistently come up against is I cannot find gluten-free broth in France. So I was like, all right, it's happening. I found this organic market. I'm going to make chicken broth. Did you have confidence in my abilities? I didn't think too much about it. Okay. We're going to make some chicken broth. Lots of the things that I have planned for this week require chicken broth, and I cannot find it here that gluten-free. They have plenty of chicken broth, but I can't find it gluten-free. But the trick is... I feel like I'm holding a football. I have never broken apart, clean, cut up a whole chicken before, and I'm I'm pretty sure I can see the guts in there. So I feel like we're gonna do this Paula Dean style. Paula Dean? That's not right. What's her name? Julia Childs <laughs> style, and I'm about to clean the chicken. Um, do you, do you think I'm supposed to just cut it open? What are these? I've never seen this part. I think that's the bottom. Maybe I'll take these, they'll start with the string. You think I need to YouTube this? I am gonna cut up the chicken. I need scissors. So the first thing I'm supposed to do is the legs and the thigh. Oh my God. Okay. I think I've just separated the thigh and the leg, but I'm pretty sure I just cut them apart now. Down the fat line, I'm, it's a, like a diagram. There's a leg! really didn't think it would be this hard. Like, I mean, it makes sense. People go to school for this. Okay, so now that the thighs and the legs are off, it's time for the wings. Fell out. 
What is this? The veins. That's heart. What is that? We gotta cut the backbone off now. Now I have to separate the breast, and I think I'm supposed to break the bone. Okay, so now we're gonna start the broth, and pretty sure I'm gonna add the organ meat because it's gotta be packed with vitamins, but not the neck and not the liver. I'm not sure why, because I know livers are good, but it said no liver, so. In goes the heart. We're gonna fill it with whole water to cover the chicken. We've got the water boiling, so it's time to add the veggies. We're gonna add onions, carrots, garlic, some celery, and parsley and peppercorns. Okay, now we put the top on and I'll come back in an hour and take the chicken breast out and let it cook for a little bit longer. I think the funniest thing is that you hadn't looked up anything and you just thought like it kidding. would be obvious how to dismantle a chicken. <laughs> like it had, would have like a step by step like dotted lines on it somehow. I know. Just well, I just right know in. the parts. You've got the legs, the thighs, the breast. How hard can it be? I want to do it again because I think I can do it better next time, less violently. Yeah. Obviously coming over here, there's many, many different aspects to it. But one, of course, was personally we wanted to grow. But for our kids, we also wanted to give them opportunities to, you know, to, to do things that they would never be able to do in the States, to, to get uncomfortable and, and to, you know, give them the opportunity to maybe overcome fears or whatever it is that, that you know, we think that are healthy things for them. When we're talking about overcoming fears, you are a naturally adventurous person. Would you describe yourself that way? I'm not adventurous. I'm just not scared of anything. So like if given the opportunity to jump off of a cliff into the water, you will do it. Sure. Okay, I will not. So it is, I am familiar with fear in many different ways, but it's specifically in like, we're gonna go do this awesome thing and, and conquer our fears. What I'm learning and through this process with myself and with the kids is that sometimes conquering your fear, it's not like a one-time decision, but it's a consistent exposure to that fear or something new that allows you to step into it and conquer it. I think, you know, being here, it has felt like constant exposure to either fears or things we're uncomfortable with yeah. that is allowing myself and especially our kids to grow and like get over those fears or do things that they would not normally do. Smith is our, um, so Everly loves animals, all things animals. Yep. Smith, even when he was little, I remember going to like a, I don't know what, five-year-old birthday party. <laughs> at like the Adventure Center and they brought out a snake. I think it was like Jack or something. Yeah, yeah they, was... they, they brought out some, it might have been a snake, it was like, it was, I don't know, it was it's a like lizard or something. Center, yeah. Yeah, so they bring it out, like the, the handler has it and he went like white and was out there. And he's always been like- Even fishing he would do Oh, that. fishing. Like, he wants to catch that fish, but if you bring it out of the water, he is out of there. So here we are at the Chateau and a part of our daily life is animals. We've got the horses and we've got the goats and he has, he has warmed up slowly yeah. to these animals. You know, he started off not touching anything. No. When touched the goats, he would not touch the horses because they're yeah. much bigger than he is. He's been given so many opportunities to ride and so um, what we've seen though, being here for a little while now, is that almost daily, he chooses to push himself a little farther 
where it comes to the animals. And the other day he came to me and said, Mom, I would like to ride a horse. Yep. And I try not to make a big deal out of it because he didn't make a big deal out of it. It was just a random moment. And I said, all right, buddy, if you want to ride a horse, you need to go next door and ask. Sure. And so he did. He went alone, mm -hmm. which in and of itself is a thing because sure. he's, you know, the shire of our three. He went and asked and our neighbor showed up the next morning ready for Smith to ride the horse. And he did it. I mean, there was like, it was not a thing. It was really cool for him to just, to finally get to this place where he's like, I can do that. And, yeah. you know, and he did. We didn't make a big deal out of it, but in my head, I it, I think it's a marked moment for me in his like development of just like enough exposure and he will walk right through that wall. Not everyone's going to just rip the bandaid off and be like, I'm gonna go do that right now and just, yeah, which is that's probably me. more. That's not my personality, that's not yeah, his personality. It's more me, Everly, we're just gonna yeah. do it. Um, it just takes him a while and that's fine. And that's, that's kind of neat to have that time here to see him go through that and just eventually, it's not something I was thinking about at all. But obviously he was going Working through it through for it. a while and yeah. you know, he, he did it, so. Training ourselves to like be thankful for the new experiences and even getting over those fears, however stupid they may be to other people. Um, for each of us, there have been some meaningful things that we have yeah. gotten over. Um, it just, I'm sure there's more to come. Yeah.